If you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button now, along with the bell icon so you can be notified whenever a new video is posted. And if you're already subscribed, check and make sure that YouTube hasn't unsubscribed you. And of course, be sure to give the video a like, as well as share it on your social media. The white supremacists hate that. And now, the Sunday Address. We know what happened with the Riverside Reckoning that happened. And this is the white supremacist retaliation that a lot of the voices of new black media have told you about. We see Alabama's chairman of the board, who is being targeted by the racist crooks down there. The white racists who attacked that dock worker in Alabama were only charged with mere misdemeanors. This for things that were just flat-out assaults, things that were clearly, at the very least, were second degree, in other words, felonies. But the DA, a good old white supremacist named Daryl Bailey, is the chief law enforcement crook down there. The police chief and the mayor are supposed to be black, but as we've already told you in new black media, they're just suck-ups to team white supremacy. The bad guys took an L. That means that the black mayor and the black police chief's white political benefactors took an L, so they're targeting the black citizens who dared to act in their own self-defense as their consolation prize. Now, you got the white media, like Rupert Murdoch's New York Post, falsely claiming that these people were charged with assault. Well, that's only a name. They were actually charged with third-degree assault, which is a misdemeanor. So the racist DA is completely complicit in all this. And the racists down there are saying that there's more people expected to be arrested in the coming days. Now, we all know what the reason for this is. The racist cops and that racist redneck DA, Daryl Bailey, they took a hard L with this one. They were the same racists who refused to punish those thugs when they were stealing the city's property. They're the ones who enabled these racists to go about their criminality without punishment. I detailed for you on Thursday's Moment of Truth, and the captain of the riverboat has himself already given interviews testifying to how those racists stole the riverboat's golf cart, and that when the riverboat staff tried to press charges, it was the police who talked them out of it, telling them, hey, basically this is a prank, and you already know, especially in a redneck sewer like Alabama, that if the police are saying, well, we don't think that this rises to the level of charges, what they're really saying is, we're not going to pursue this one. The riverboat captain was the one who blew the whistle on that. So now the same racist cops who told the riverboat crew that they wouldn't help them pursue charges against these punks is now suddenly interested in arresting anyone and everyone who they can possibly put charges against, even false charges. They don't bring charges against the criminals, and they make up charges against people who haven't broken any laws. This is justice under white supremacy, which means no justice at all. What these racists did was a hate crime. At least one of the witnesses has publicly stated that the attackers were using racial epithets towards their victim before they attacked them. But there's been no hate crime charges brought. That's because the DA is a racist. He's deliberately refusing to enforce the law. And we all know why. The racist pukes down there who let those criminals get away with breaking the law, and when the public finally put a stop to it, they want to show that they're on team white supremacy and closing ranks for the bad guys. The DA's mad because he saw his fellow racists get beat down, and he took that L personally. He took that L as hard as they did. So this is his way of trying to get even. He targets the people who are helping to rescue that victim. Because under white supremacy, black people are not supposed to be able to protect themselves at all. Black people are supposed to know if you call yourself defending yourself from some white supremacists, well, they're going to put charges on you. Well, the black folks show that they weren't scared of that. That's also what terrifies the hell out of those little racists down there in Alabama. You have black folks with the cops literally only a couple of feet behind them. And the black folks are like, oh, we got this. We're going to handle this one. They were not scared of the police at all. They were not scared of any sort of retaliation from the thugs in blue. That's what scared them. They don't want black people seeing that and getting emboldened. They don't want that kind of self-determination and self-defense to become habit-forming. Black people starting to lose their hesitation. The intimidation doesn't work. They don't want an example of black people who aren't intimidated. People saw the DA and the cops' friends getting stomped and the community giving them some instant karma, and that's what the race is down there trying to misuse their position to halt in the future. The DA's pals lost the fight, so now he's trying to help them win after the fact with a pen. The racist DA is protecting the criminals because he's one of them. Now, this is where the black grass roots has to take notes about how this kind of thing is to be handled. When black folks are standing up for themselves and the authorities predictably try to bring charges against them, we need to already know who people's legal counsel is. The bad guys are going to try to throw up a smoke screen. We got to be able to pierce it. 
And that means information, accurate information. That way, when they call themselves jamming somebody up, we can get those people out of jail and we can bring pressure on those racist DAs and let them know these charges are going to get fought. Creeps like this racist Bailey character, they have to be taught to take that L. Now, they're going to hate it. They'll try to do some dirtbag maneuver to retaliate. But in 2020, we showed police and the DAs nationwide that they better just learn to take that L. And the racists in Alabama are clearly in need of a refresher course. The police are not trying to take any action to stop those white rioters. They weren't tackling any of them. Notice that the police were sitting there with their hands up. Oh, everybody just calm down, especially you black folks. They weren't beating those white racists with any batons, no pepper spray all over the place. None of the standard police brutality that they do against black people who are just standing there. Oh, all of a sudden, the cops, they were restrained and reserved. None of them trying to be any half-brained tough guys. Notice that? There's going to be more incidents like this, and the black grassroots is going to require good information on the ground that we can act on. In order for us to act, we need accurate information. That information has to get to us in a timely manner. Black people who act to defend themselves and to defend other black people must be empowered by the knowledge that when the police attempt to criminalize them exercising their rights, black folks have got their backs. But in order for that to happen, the public must be empowered with accurate information. So when these racist cops and DAs illegally arrest and charge law-abiding black citizens simply exercising their rights, the public knows how to make their voices heard and how to respond. This is why you have black people, especially the new voices of black media, asking who these citizens were down there who were restoring order. Because we knew what the response from the white supremacists down there would be. When things like this happen, it's crucial that we know who the targets of white supremacy are before the enemy does. And we also need to have reliable information so that we know how to reach them. Now, in the case of Reggie Ray, he was arrested, but he made bond immediately because they didn't have anything on him. This is just a nuisance arrest. So if the white races down there can feel as if they got something of a consolation prize, he's reportedly being represented by Slee's merit. We won't discuss that one any further. But the truth of the matter is, Reggie Ray is a hero, as are the rest of those citizens down there who are putting the criminals in their place. We need to get on code and organize when it comes to accurately identifying these political prisoners and getting them the help that they need. The old shriveled up civil rights fossils down there are going to want to pray and sing some church hymns because they think being powerless is cute. Well, we don't. They made it a tradition to utterly abandon black people who stand up to white supremacy. That's part of the reason why black folks get hesitant to stand up for themselves. The necessary infrastructure and the culture of defending those who defend themselves has been largely undermined by the olders. I dare not say elders. Well, we have to establish a new tradition of defending those who defend themselves. And to make sure that we stand up for this tradition with vigor. We understand that when bastards like this Daryl Bailey clown call themselves pushing us, we push back. Only harder. Information is power. When black people are standing up for themselves and standing up to white supremacy, that is not the time for confusion. Black people must feel empowered and confident in asserting their rights, starting with the right to self-defense. The police and the DAs are a racist gang who selectively target and attack black people. Well, the only thing that can stop an organized racist offense is an organized defense for justice. We did it in 2020. They called themselves selectively attacking black youth with trumped up charges, saying, well, these guys attacked the police. Well, the grassroots mobilized and started getting those kids bailed out. Innocent people are not supposed to be in jail. The white supremacists are. The racists and the police in the DA's offices and the white media, when they saw that there was a program at work, they also realized that the people were on code against them, against injustice. And they still haven't recovered, by the way. That was an L that we shoved down their throats till they choked on it. Yeah, they thought that they were going to be feeling as if they had some power. We're going to put some trumped up charges on these kids. And then people found out, oh, they realize, oh, these guys are making some sort of cause celeb out of specifically freeing those who have been falsely accused of doing something against the police. Now, a few years have passed. The bad guys are wanting to test the waters again, trying to get their little old courage up, see if they can get away with the same old racist maneuvers. They're testing to see if the people are still on code. When you have so-called authorities bringing trumped-up charges against innocent people, when these so-called authorities defy the law that they swore to uphold, when they refuse to enforce the law based on the color of the person breaking it, 
The public is also supposed to recognize that those authorities are criminals, and the public now has to restore law and order. A prosecutor who ignores the law and intentionally gives slaps on the wrist to violent racist thugs is not a public official. He's a criminal occupying public office, the people's office. He is an agent of lawlessness, acting as an accessory after the fact. And if he's occupying an office that belongs to the people, then the people have to have him removed. As good as it was to see black people taking action to restore law and order against some racist white mob, as good as it was to see them showing fearlessness in the face of white supremacist cops and corruption from these black misleaders, what also needs to be understood is that the only people who are going to support justice is going to be the black grassroots. We have to have eyes and ears on the ground, accurate information being given to us whenever these incidents occur. And as for the enemy, we're going to condition those white supremacists to take these L's, and we're not going to let them have any more consolation prizes. We're not going to let them have anything that they can point to and try to feel like they got a little bit of payback. This is about subjecting those white supremacists to a breaking process, not just in Alabama, but anywhere and everywhere the white supremacists operate. What they're trying to do in Alabama, persecuting black people who defend themselves, that's nothing new. And it won't stop us from standing up for ourselves or for other black people either. And if these white supremacists think that they are going to somehow discourage us or intimidate us, then they can have a seat. The hard way. Good evening, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Endoro, Tamira Haygood, Miss Incognito 72, Maurice Rigaud, and King Edwards. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.